Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on clubbing. Clubbing is a medical term used to describe a characteristic bulging of the distal finger and nail bed. It is often described in stages. Stage 1 is softening of the nail bed, causing a spongy feeling when the nail is pressed. Stage 2, loss of the normal less than 165 degrees angle. Stage 3, convex nail growth. Stage 4, thickening of the distal part of the finger. And stage 5, shine and striation of the nail and skin. Clubbing has a large number of differential diagnoses. The vast majority of clubbing is bilateral. Unilateral clubbing is very rare, and has been seen in patients with hemiplegia, dialysis fistulas, and ulnar artery AV malformations. Pulmonary and neoplastic causes are by far the most common causes. This is a table showing the possible causes of clubbing. There are neoplastic causes like bronchogenic carcinoma, lymphoma, or pleural tumors. Pulmonary causes like cystic fibrosis, asbestosis, pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis, and hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. Cardiac causes like cyanotic heart failure, and endocarditis. Gastrointestinal causes like inflammatory bowel disease, liver disease, and celiac disease. Infections like tuberculosis, infective endocarditis, or HIV. And endocrinological disease like thyroid disease. All of these are possible causes of clubbing. For its mechanism. Many theories have been developed that attempt to explain clubbing. However, the mechanism for each etiology is still unclear. Vasodilatation and proliferation of the distal nail beds is thought to be key, and has been demonstrated in small MRI studies. However, why vasodilatation occurs and what other contributing elements are present is not known. The lungs are thought to play a role in stopping factors that may precipitate clubbing from reaching the distal circulation. This theory is supported by observation that patients with untreated patent ductus arteriosus demonstrate clubbing that is confined to the feet. The PDA is thought to provide an avenue for blood from the pulmonary artery which bypasses the lungs, and is shunted into the descending aorta. The most currently accepted explanation involves platelets and platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF. This theory does not explain unilateral clubbing and is not applicable to all cases where clubbing is present. It is hypothesized that in healthy individuals, megakaryocytes are broken down into fragments in the lungs and these fragments become platelets. If this fragmentation does not occur, whole megakaryocytes can become wedged in the small vessels of distal extremities. Once trapped, they release PDGF, which recruit cells and promote proliferation of muscle cells and fibroblasts. This cell proliferation causes the characteristic appearance of clubbing. Therefore, any pathology that affects normal pulmonary circulation, such as cardiac shunts or lung disease, may allow whole megakaryocytes to enter the peripheral circulation unfragmented. In bowel disease, it is suggested that the polysemia and arteriovenous malformations of the lung seen in some instances contribute to this process. In addition, vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF has been isolated in some patients with lung cancer and hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy, and is likely to contribute to hyperplasia of the distal digits. This flow chart shows the mechanism of clubbing. In disruption of normal pulmonary circulation, megakaryocytes are not broken down into fragments. They are then deposited into circulation of the extremities. Platelet growth factors are released. Proliferation of muscle cells and fibroblasts occurs. Hence clubbing occurs. For its sign value, clubbing is almost always pathological and should be investigated. However, its absence does not exclude underlying disease. That's all for this video. Thank you.